This is part of the summer series of Saints and Sermons about women by women, brought to you by the Cathedral of the Incarnation in Baltimore, Maryland. Our preacher is the Venerable Ruth Elder. Let us pray. Here we are again, Lord. Great things are they that you have done for us, O Lord, our God. They are more than we can count. How great are your wonders and your plans for us, Jesus. Oh, that we would make them known and tell them. Our cup of blessings overflow. May we open our ears and our hearts to the words that God has prepared for us this day. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning, church. It is good to be back in your presence again this day, and it is wonderful to see so many of you again. It's my pleasure to be here, and I must say I am honored and a little challenged to bring this series of sermons to a conclusion and to talk to you about Deacon Phoebe. As a vocational deacon, I am excited to preach about her, but more about Phoebe later. I also want to share that it's a little nerve-wracking for me to be standing here and to having had Lauren read the gospel for me. That's a little bit out of order, but that was fun. Thank you, Lauren. We've come to the end of our sermon summer series on saints and sermons about women of faith by women of faith. We have set for you an example in these last few weeks of God's call, about God's invitation and inspiration. And as you know, this, these calls were unique to these women, but they're also unique to each one of you each one of us here present. And for the time that is mine, I'd like to take a piece from the uh, gospel lesson that says, you are witnesses of the deeds of your ancestors. That's all I'm saying about the gospel. It was too tough, it didn't work for me, that's it. <laughs> for the past 10 Sundays plus, we've heard about women ancient prophets, contemporary prophets, all bearing and sharing and spreading the gospel of Jesus and love to their neighbors as they were called across land and sea. They have been examples for all of us. And I want to take this time to just briefly recap what I've learned from some of them, what we've heard over these last couple of weeks. We've heard about how our divided church may follow Isabel's example to seek the unity of God that he desires for all people. How we may discern the way to show reconciling love and the true freedom in God's time, in God's time, like Reverend Pauly did when she revealed Jesus to the people and she waited she wasn't a part of the Philadelphia 11, but she waited for God's time to move her forward. How like Eva, we have been inspired to serve Jesus with singleness of heart, despite obstacles that we think we see before us. Does any of this speak to any of us here today? How we've been allowed and allowed the spirit to guide us to truth that we are all free, using the vision and the courage that Jesus displayed for us to stand up against oppression and injustice, just like Sojourner and Elizabeth and Amelia. And we honor the spirit of the Philadelphia 11, whose ordination anniversary we celebrate this year, that when called upon to defend the cause of justice, and to assist others, they bravely stood up to build up 
the body of Christ. I will note that women were not ordained to the vocational diaconate, not deaconesses, until 1970. And how like Joanna, Mary, and Salome, may we perceive the presence of our risen Lord in the midst of pain and fear and still go about proclaiming the resurrection. How like Florence, may we support those who need healing by displaying our virtues of patience, mercy, hope, and steadfast love. And how, like Phoebe, we may lead voices and people with our statue, with our prayer, and our humility as we take the gospel to the ends of the earth. We are witnesses to the deeds of our ancestors, prophets, and poets. So what we know about Phoebe resides in Paul's letter to the Romans in just 52 words. I counted them. And they all lie right there at the beginning of chapter 16, which is also the last book of Romans. That's all we have, just those 52 words. However, scholars has imagined what she was like for us in two books, I found two books about Phoebe and several commentaries about her. But what I wonder is, what would someone say about you in just 52 words? Where would they have to look to fill in the gaps to hold you up in just a short span? Paul calls her a deacon of the early church, and she lived in a seaport city near Corinth. We know that he sent her to Rome to read a letter to the Christians there, so she was an important person. It is also recorded that she was a benefactor of Paul, and in her house, she held a house church. You know, back to the small, intimate, gatherings of people, much like I understand you do after coffee hour where we get together for small table talk. She supported them financially and through her leadership. And I surmise that she was a woman of wealth and of means with the ability to move through the city and across the country in ways that were different from some other women. Now, there is much discussion about Paul's calling her a deacon rather than a servant or a minister, and we don't get a call story for her similar to that of Stephen. But still, we hold her up for the leadership and the work that she did. Paul is also sometimes labeled as being anti-woman but you will note that he wrote on both sides of the equation, women should be quiet, but yet he had Phoebe leading and speaking, and others, other women of faith that he talks about in Romans, right there in Romans 16. She's a part of a larger group of women that partner with the Apostle Paul at that time, like Chloe and Priscilla and Mary, just to name a few. This chapter talks about their service, and it reminds us about our call and our responsibility to service. Paul commends Phoebe to the Roman Christians of that time because her acts have justified her presence. She was chosen because she could read, something that a lot of women and a lot of men of that time did not do. As a deacon myself, I admire and revere Phoebe as one of the first identified female deacons. 
We seldom see her like Stephen held up in stained glass windows, but that's okay. It's coming. And as I was researching her, I could only remember my call to holy orders and my ordination vows to follow Jesus, to serve God, and to lead by the power of the Holy Spirit. I also remember all the men and the women and the children and the people that supported me during my discernment, formation, and even today. I embrace this special ministry of servanthood for all people, for my ability to just be present, my ability to lend a helping hand, my ability to stand before you today and share my thoughts on my sister, Phoebe, who supports, as I support those who are poor in spirit, not just financially, but socially. For the weak, for those who have little hope or little knowledge of their strength. For the sick and for the sick and tired. For the lonely, even in a room full of people. This is the life and work of a deacon. And this is what scripture implies that she did. We are witnesses of the deeds of our ancestors. So what is the message of these two verses in Romans for us today? How might Paul's words about Phoebe in this Bible series challenge us in various contexts and aspects of our lives? He gives us her example to lead, to lead the church, to lead God's people. He gives us her example of being a benefactor of many people, using what she had financially and per personally for the service of others. How is Jesus calling you to lead? How is Jesus calling you to be a benefactor to someone else? If we are here, if we are listening, we have more blessings than we know. Our cups are overflowing, and it is important and incumbent upon us to share that overflow with others, for us to share the gospel of love and hope. So I challenge you to write your story in 52 words. I challenge you to go back and look at those videos of those over 50 women that we have shared with you this summer to see where your place is. Your assignment, my friends, is to allow God to use you to be messengers, to be prophets, to help someone to see and to hear the good news, or to just open their eyes to the good news that's all around us. Yes, there's a lot of bad news, there's a lot of bad things, but there are a lot of good people doing good work, one person at one time taking one step for the gospel of Jesus. God has a plan for each of us. And God has set before us several people this summer who just like us stepped out on faith. So I asked you to embrace your assignment, take this message of love, and care to your friends, to your family, to your neighbors, and into the world. I charge you to lead someone to Christ by your presence and your word. 
I charge you to be a benefactor for someone else in the way that only you can. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to go. Go and do likewise.